There were 28,000 fans again in that Singapore-China game, and none of them left. Yep. None of them left until the very singing, end. Yeah, and they were singing, singing the- chanting. It was a great game. Give them a good performance, and they'll give you just as good a performance in the stands. Welcome back to part two of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chan Kyung. And we have our sponsors back again. We do, because now they are sponsoring a global award-winning podcast. So we've got some wonderful giveaways, gifts, freebies, sign-ups, you name it. We have it right here. Thanks to our friends at Starhub. Starhub. So... They've been. They'll be organizing a lot of uh, free uh, live live screening events, and on the nineteenth of May, which is the final day of the season, the EPL season, they're gonna hold a massive party at Marina Bay Sands Ballroom. Wow! Yeah. So celebrate, you know, the last day of this Premier League. Um, at uh, it's football for all carnival. So admission is free for all. You come. You bring along your family and friends. You cheer for your favorite teams, and that and that night, you know, all ten games will be playing at the same time. The MBS ballroom yeah. is free. Yeah, people can just come in and you watch. Come in, watch. Yeah, it's a that's massive. It's a massive that's, place. That's, wow, yeah. that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is and, brilliant. And obviously, we will be there. We'll be doing some uh, we pre will. pre-event uh, podcast uh, show for you. Um, but you can also enjoy free activities like treats, lucky draw prizes, uh, and much more. So visit this website. Find out all about the event. We'll see you there on 19th of May. Brilliant. And it's because of you that we have a sponsor in Starhub. And it's because of you that Starhub are working with us to organize these fantastic community events. And you've been sending in all the all your comments, all our very Absolutely. good comments. And this week we got three really, really good Some comments. Some of the best. Some yeah. of the best. So so uh, uh, just before the international break, we spoke to Bahaki Kaizen, yep. who is now with FAS and he's organizing this wonderful in- initiative the Singapore Youth Flick. It is, but you still get yeah. people complain. Uh, right? yeah, yeah, there'll be people complaining. Right. But, oh, don't get but me started. It's good to hear that a lot of people are actually supportive of yes. this, this campaign. So this this uh, viewer, Fern SMP9416, is very encouraged that Bayhaki went out and met all 52 of the academies in person and sat down with them rather than just coming up with some grand plan in isolation or only having met a few of the top or bigger academies. Props to him. The roles of the academies have changed in recent years and figure out, figuring out that part that they will play in the wider football landscape is a complex but important task. The way he described being trashed by JDT as an opportunity and that the teams who get it understand what it means to be able to have a good quality teams come to your doorstep. This shows that he's got his eye on proper long-term development. All the best to him in this new role. Absolutely wonderful comment. Couldn't agree more. Mm. By hockey, is not talking. He's doing. Mm. Yeah. You know, we always say one of the biggest gripes in Singapore football is people don't listen to the ground. Mm. You hear, I've heard it for 25 oh, years. 25 years. <laughs> they don't get down to the grassroots. They're not hearing the common gripes of the average coach at the average academy. He went to every single one you of remember, them. You remember when he said it, both of us like, oh, you went to it. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Did you? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 I did. I did. He went around, he listened to the gripes, got their feedback, put it all together. You wanted a nationwide mass participation youth league and now you have it. So either put up or shut up. Yeah, and, There's and, no excuses now. And now no no academics can say, oh, he forgot to talk to us nope. and not talk to us or what he wants. He spoke to every one of you and he come up with this and he invites every one of you to take part. Mm. And that's 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 inclusivity if you want, if, yep. if anything. And that's, that's the way it has to be if you really want to get the grounds to support this very basic grassroots uh, initiative. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And I'm glad uh, Ferns brought up this point about JDT because oh. I've got, oh, yeah. I knew this was going to happen. We knew that JDT were going to whack a few teams. Oh, yeah, we yeah. knew that. And now you're seeing the comments, how is this good for Singapore football if JDT just whack, 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 six, seven, eight, nine, ten? For heaven's sake, you moaned before that you football, Singapore football wasn't competitive enough. Yeah. Now you're saying it's too competitive. Yeah, right? Poor little strawberries. No, we don't want to lose so much. You know, just like, come on. Do we want professional footballers or do we want tender strawberries? Yeah. You can't have it both ways. You're supposed to play JDT, lose to JDT, and then hopefully learn no, from JDT. If, if, if your young young kid 
loses badly against JDT and doesn't play well for, for the rest, then he's not fit to become a better footballer. I play junior football, yeah. under 11s, under 12s. One season, do you know the best result we had? Mm. The best result was losing 7-1. That was the uh, one a London team. Okay. I scored the goal. Oh, okay. No, no, it was wonder. a fluke. It was a deflected goal. It was a complete accident. Okay. That was our best result in the entire season, oh. losing 7-1. Most weeks it was 16, 15, 14, 13, you name it, right? Yeah, yeah. None of us quit. Yeah. None of us went home and cried. Yeah. We just came back the next week and got thrashed again. But we just kept going. Okay, in all, all honesty, you need a coach to guide you a bit through the losses. Excuse but me. we did have one. You didn't we have, did have one. one. They okay, just weren't a very good also. coach. We were just a terrible yeah. team. Uh, yeah, so, so you know, you got to take the losses and then really losses don't really matter. Otherwise, yeah. right, what's the alternative? We go back, the same team plays the same team every the week time, yeah. with the same result and, frankly speaking, the same mediocrity and no progress. Yep. We have to have something aspirational. We have yep. to have a pathway. Yep. This is JDT. They're miles in front of us, but at least we have something to aspire to. Absolutely. So I, I have no issue with that. Great comment, by great the way. Comment, great, great comment. comment. Thank you very much. We have another great comment from our, this this one, our regular customers. <laughs> regular guests, uh, Lingish Kuma, one, two, three, zero. That's a great, great comment. I really wish I was a kid in the current climate. I reckon, ironically, by Haki mentioned trials for Ballester Kausa FC. True story in my life. A group of five friends of mine attended and only one was selected. I assume he attended the Ballester Kausa trial and only one was selected. The rest of us, me including, had no other pathways and had to depend on our social football to upskill ourselves. <laughs> Hence, I truly support this initiative as I very much was the one kid who was left out. Hmm. More importantly, the key takeaway is that fundamentally, this is a mammoth project and it will take all stakeholders to do their part and even parents themselves to initiate community bonding amongst themselves. They can take turns to potluck, aid with the setup, mend the water points, etc. This will be part of the inclusiveness and provides another platform to demonstrate our multiculturalism. All the best for the projects and keep us engaged with the developments. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. By Haki made the very good point. You made the good point, yeah. actually. For the first time, the Singapore Youth League gives us a safety net. Yeah. That's what was always missing in Singapore football. You get your one shot at Balasteer, yeah. Tangjong Paga. You don't make it, you're out. Yeah, you go back to your other options. In other countries, yeah. Australia, England, even Malaysia, there'd be other leagues, local leagues you could take part in. We never had that. No. Now we do. And that benefits two ways. One, three ways. One, keeps our players fit keeps them engaged in the sport, keeps them involved with team sports. But thirdly, most importantly, you do occasionally get late bloomers. Exactly. Right? You get the odd late bloomer who starts to peak around 17, 18, 19, or even post-NS, and now we've captured him. Yeah. We've captured him with the youth league. That's why the safety net will, will keep him playing. And once, until until he finally gets, you know, gets his late blooming time and then he gets, gets, gets all... Uh, gets away with it, gets off with it. So, yeah. Yeah, so I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine. Nearly 50. <laughs> I'm, yeah, still, I'm still yeah, waiting still for mine. Late, late, late bloomer. Yeah. Good comment though. I like yeah. that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. All right, we've got one more. We've got one Read more. One. This, this is a bit more negative. Yes, here ah. we go. Read one, Rahim says, not happening. Putting all this initiative to develop talents aside, football is logistically not viable for the space it occupies. Every child will experience swimming whether they like it due to the swim safer syllabus because it has real life utility use. A lot of schools have either reduced or eliminated their fields in favor of converting to a multi-purpose hall with sheltered concrete courts. One court can be purposed for multiple sports and even be used for non-sports social events. There's a reason why football is just a meme. What do you think? Uh, it's a bit... So pessimistic, you know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yes, we we do have space constraints. Yes, the number of fields is getting smaller and smaller, uh, fewer and fewer year, yearly. But there are still fields for you to play football in. You know? As Durich pointed out, yeah. a lot of them are empty on weekends because yeah. it's too hot and people oh, don't want to yeah. play. If you want to play on on hot hot afternoons? Then that's your chance. So even if you say you want swimming, swimming obviously is a very successful sport in Singapore, but you still need your swimming pools and you still need to build it. You know, it's still it's still fighting with every other thing for space as yeah. well. 
unless you say it's about jogging or, or mm. running, then maybe maybe we, we we don't need that that space. But any kind of major sports, you still need your facilities, football as well. And we we do still view football as a as an important sport in National Singapore. Sport. Yeah. Look, I get the point about space. Mm. I've never quite bought into the lack of space argument when it comes to Singapore. Yeah. I went to the World Cup in Brazil in 2014. I saw the favelas. Kids are playing in alleyways, yeah. scraps of weed-strewn bits of concrete, and they're developing their close ball control at that age in a kind of space that, honestly, HDB has more, has mm. more space because they're playing in the streets. Conversely, I went to Iceland. That's literally the Game of Thrones mm set, right? It's snowy, volcanic rock. It gets darkness for most of the year. So what did they do? They built these wonderful indoor, indoor bubbles, bubble. right? With a government initiative from sort of from kids all the way up to professional level and with a population about the same as Senkang and Pongol. 300,000. Correct. Take, yeah. I don't buy the lack of space argument no. and I don't buy the small population argument. Mm. I think it's a cop out. There yeah. are too many other examples showing us how it can be done. Absolutely. So, but anyway, thank you for Great comments. comments. Yeah, we'll Great have comments. some more. We'll, yeah, well, you can still debate it online on our on, on, our, on our websites and also obviously on YouTube and yep. you can, uh, there's Yahoo <laughs> Southeast Asia on YouTube, yep. Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Yeah, we disagree agreeably yeah. on this show. Yeah, no now, let's get into it. Singapore oh. against China. I was there, took my daughter Absolutely fabulous and, game. And guess what? I just came back from a holiday in Tai Tai Taipei, in Taipei, and I thought like I'll, I'll miss all both both of the matches. I caught the second one on CCTV Chinese oh. Chinese TV Sports. I I caught the second match. So you you caught the first match. I was there. I, yeah, it was there. I saw the second match. Well, let's talk about the yeah. first game first. Mm. Again, the cynicism. The cynicism. I saw positive roots of progress mm. under Ogura. From the first minute, they tried to play possessive counter-attacking yeah. football. It didn't work at first. Yeah, first they were quite was. nervy and they lost possession too much. They gave away two silly goals. But I could see what he was trying to do. There was a clear playing pattern. Then second half, they changed it. They brought on Faris Rumley, yep. quicker, low centre of gravity. The more forward experience. line was mm. much more mobile mm. and it worked. And mm. honestly, they should have won. Yeah. They should have beaten China's 1.4 billion that's population. A, that's a very controversial penalty call right, right? there. Yeah. But I saw positive mm. shoots of progress. Mm. Attacking football, possession football, quick football. Let's give the man a chance because yeah. first couple of games, Oguru was doing okay. Even in China, yeah. they were slightly they unlucky. Were slightly, yeah, the 4-1 the, the defeat in China was a bit harsh, the score yeah. line. But really, the, you know, I think Ogura has been hitting the so far hitting the right notes. So, I mean, in the in the Singapore match, I think it, he he did the he did the switch the tactics that eventually allowed Singapore to make the comeback. And any signs of comeback against uh, the, the stronger team, you know, the the Singapore Lions that will make that connection of fan. By the end of the match, you can see the fans yeah. are fervently against uh, uh, uh supporting the Lions and. And, but he still remains a bit more down to earth during yes. the, the, the post match uh, press conference. He said, I'm not satisfied. Uh, please don't tell me congratulations. If we got another goal, that, that is congratulations. So he's, I mean, I mean, it's easy for him to say, oh, yeah, we did very well. We come back from two, two goals down. It was a great, great, great uh, performance. It was actually not really that great a performance. Because he was right. Mm. And I loved his frankness. Mm. How many times have we seen. Let's be frank, patronizing post match comments. We can see the lines were not very good, yeah. not very well coached, you know, beaten or snatching a draw against minnows. And then you've got to listen to the coach say, Oh, I saw many positives to take away. <laughs> well, we didn't. Yeah. Whereas this game, I think Ogura called it exactly how yeah, we exactly. saw it. Yeah. Good progress, but they actually should have won. Mm. And I just want to give a shout out to the Singapore fans because I've always said this. I've never bought into this unfair stereotype that Singaporean football fans are just a load of bandwagon jumpers. Mm. I've always said if you just give them something, yeah. if you give them a little bit of progress, they will back you. There were 28,000 fans again in that Singapore-China game. And none of them left. Yep. None of them left until the very singing, end. Yeah, and singing, singing yeah. chanting. It was a great game. Give them a good performance and they'll give you just as good a performance in the stands. I thought yeah. it was a great showing from the fans. So 
in June, they'll be playing South Korea at the National Stadium. Already people are asking me whether we can, can, can we get free tickets? Well, he's my best friend now. So, <laughs> yeah. Me and Son Hong Ming. Son Hong Ming, man. We're like that. And if yeah. you haven't read my story, read it on Yahoo. I interviewed Son Hong Ming yeah, so last see, week. One match, you can see people are getting interest. But social media was really, 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 uh, you know, filled with all the goodwill yeah. st- stories uh, about about the, the, the comeback. Yeah, even though the second second league was, I mean, they they tried, they 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 equalized, and then but the second half, I think the the China captain Wu Lei was really really good, mm. scored the decisive goals, and Singapore were down to ten men because they use up all their substitutes, and uh, I think is, I think one of them got injured. Yeah, yeah. So 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 it was a bit harsh. The four one score, maybe two one was could be a better scoreline, but yeah, yeah, but. A good start, like. good, good start. start. Mm, but good start, but maybe start for a maybe a little bit less goodwill across the causeway at oh. the moment. Things are not looking so as optimistic as they once were yeah. in Malaysia. So, football. so Malaysia started the World Cup qualifiers last year. Wow, beating Kyrgyzstan and beating uh, Chinese Taipei, and two two straight wins. And you know, everybody was saying, "Ah, oh, yeah, we could we could uh, actually advance into the next round of qualifiers." And then during the Asia Cup, they drew with uh, South Korea three all. Wow, that's even a m- even bigger achievement in their eyes. But in one week, son, everybody came down to earth with a thud. They lost two 0 twice to Oman. Yeah, and suddenly all the cracks began to surface. So 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 first. Kim, uh, there were rumors that the the coach, South Korean coach Kim Pang on, uh, offered his resignation but was turned down. So mm. all the rumors swirling, and then um, there, there was also criticism that you know you know the, you had two uh, important World Cup qualifiers in March, and then you hold the the Malaysian Super League uh, was in um, was supposed to start in February but they shifted it to May like Singapore did. Yeah, but they don't hold any preseason. Matches like Singapore did with all the, uh, the they had a preseason uh, tournament, so nothing, no, no preseason games. All the all the national players in the, the was like match match not, not fit, not yeah. match fit, and that's why they ran out of steam both, both games against Oman. Oman scored late goals, wow. so so um you can you can watch our, our Malaysian freelance journalist uh, Rizal. Who, well, I was going to ask you yeah. about Rizal because mm-hmm. Rizal is up there. He mm-hmm. covers Malaysian football yeah, yeah. for Yahoo. What is he feeling like the mood is on the ground? Are they starting to turn? Yeah, the, 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 you, you see the latest reports they are starting to say uh, um uh, the the tactics are predictable. Oh, really? Yeah, and then you know um Kim Kim Pang on should come out with a plan B quickly. The players are, he trusts some players too much, you know, should have put in other players. But you know, this these things will happen when you start to lose. Mm. I mean, and and you know, you start off so positively. But they're still not not out of it yet. If in June they manage to go to Kurdistan and win Kurdistan the their group leaders right now. Then they, they still can they still can get down their, their get advanced uh in, into the next next round. But it's going to be tough. It's yeah. a much tougher route right now. Well, that's a good segue. Yeah. Speaking of tough routes, oh. football pitches. Oh, Again, is it 2023? Is it Groundhog Day? We're talking about women's football. The Deloitte Women's Super League is yeah. back. And uh, we're also Premier talking mm-hmm. Premier League. Mm-hmm. We're also talking about pitches oh, or lack of. Absolutely. Again. So just to recap, it was the Chua Chu Kang Stadium. Mm. You want to tell them what happened? So Chua Chu Kang Stadium was designated as the stadium where all most of the women's Premier League matches mm. will be played. So already you you think you know we've got to play a whole season of league matches on that single pitch. Yep. It's gonna it's gonna have a lot of wear and tear on the pitch itself, right? Mm. So the first week uh, um, uh, of games were played on 9th and 10th of March, if I'm not wrong. And the pitch was in a Bad state. I've seen a photo. Yeah. Boggy, swampy, swampy puddles because of everywhere. puddles everywhere. Um, no bear. And then the, the you you see the 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 ladies playing football there. You're like, come on. This last season they said they didn't have any facilities like changing room and everything, remember? Yeah. yeah. So there was a lot of complaints yeah. at the start. They fixed that thing. Mm. They now there's proper uh changing facilities for for all the uh, women's players and now the pitch started off looking like a mud mud pool shocking shocking i mean if you want to set up a pro, a, 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 a 
a Premier League, and if you want to start a women's league, you know, you should do it, do things right. Correct. You cannot say, uh, we, we just give a pitch, you all play, just, just play all you want and we don't care. About exactly pitch. that, right. Yeah. Two things. It's called the Deloitte Women's Premier League. You're mm. already lucky to have a sponsor. Mm. It's very hard to get sports yeah. sponsors yeah. in this current climate. You have one. At least meet them halfway and give them the kind of facilities they deserve. Because yeah. Deloitte's name is on this league, yes. right? They don't want negative publicity. Obviously not. They can easily put their money elsewhere. I think it's the very bare minimum to give them a decent pitch. Exactly. Which ties into my next point, which is this is classic Singapore football not seeing the wood for the trees. We always have these grand ideas, grand projects, grand schemes. Get the fundamentals right first. And they are unleashed the raw project specifically said that it is for men's football and women's football. Yeah. They want to uplift both men's and women's football yeah. in Singapore. And and since the start, they always been insisting that they you know the the scholarship they gave up is is both to men young young boys and young girls to footballers. And now, but you know the footballers, the young girls footballers look at the Premier League pitch uh, at Chua Chu Kang. How does they how must how are they feel? How of must course. they feel? Compared to you know the the pristine pictures of Jalan Besar yeah. or Bishan Bishan Stadium, and then they get such a rundown uh, uh, pitch. How must they? How must be the feeling? Awful. Don't, like, they don't deserve it. And it's again, fi- uh, in, all, in all fairness, they finally said yeah, yeah, yeah. they're gonna close the pitch that for emergency repairs for for the month ahead. So they are playing their some of their matches some some. They should have an- still should have anticipated. Yeah, it. you should have started off like that. I mean, last point. Hmm. It seems unfair to compare, you know, the Deloitte Women's Premier League with Tottenham Hotspur because I'm not saying they've got the same facilities. Right. They haven't. But when I went to the Tottenham training ground, they made it really really clear to all of us: do not under any circumstances. Step on that pitch. The turf is sacrosanct. They will kick you out of the training ground if you step on that pitch. When I saw the pitch, Ankyong, I thought it was AstroTurf. I thought it was this. (laughs) It was only when I went up really close. I went, that's real grass. It's flawless because it doesn't matter about sponsors and, you know, global Mm -hmm. superstars. The pitch is everything. The pitch yeah. is everything. It shows how dedicated you are to the players that right? you know you have. You see, if you don't have the right tools, a workman, workwoman can't operate. Yeah. It's that simple. Get the fundamentals right. Yeah, please get something. I know you are doing it to fix fix it right now, but you know, should have done this before the season started. Yeah, I, I can't uh, believe we're still talking about it. What yeah, do you guys think? Send all your comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter or X, on Yahoo SEA on TikTok. And thanks to you for making us a global winning podcast because it means we have a sponsor yeah. in Starhub who are bringing out the goodies. Oh, yeah. So we have a nice contest giveaway from Starhub. You know, they are going to hold this Starhub Football Festival on the 20th and 21st of April. At our Tampines Hub. Yeah, not Chua Chu Kang. Not Chua Chu Kang. No. It's Tampines Hub is a good <laughs> good pitch. <laughs> so on the 21st, which is a Sunday, they'll they'll have a special exhibition match which will feature English Premier League legends such as Dwight York, Teddy Sheringham. Played for West Ham. David James. Played for West Ham. Uh, I'm going to do this every John, week. John Arnerisa didn't play for West Ham. Play for West Ham. <laughs> I can't remember who he played for. I don't remember. So, I've interviewed him before. He's a good yeah, guy. He's a, good guy. He's he's a good character. Guy. So... Yeah, and then there'll be there are much more players. Glenn Johnson, play for West Ham. Patrick Verger, nope, no, nope. wasn't good uh, enough. Vla- Vladimir Smitser, <laughs> he, he was, he was, he was, he was. <laughs> so, so anyway, quite, 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 quite a good lineup of uh, uh, EPL legends, and they'll be facing Singapore legends such as Alexander, Alexander Durit, currently in the top ten list for most hat tricks scored since two thousand. Yep, ahead Number of nine. Harry Kane, ahead of Harry Kane, or something. That's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, they also have uh, Indra Sardan. Nasri Nasir. Our boy, Bai Haki. Bai Haki, guys, and that's, uh, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm going to say. So if you want to go and see them, here's your chance to win f- uh, a pair of tickets, okay? Five of you all will get to win a pair of tickets to the to the exhibition match. All you have to do is to go to this Google Form web- uh, website, Google Form, where there's a contest form and you answer a simple question, which uh, English Premier League football legend are you looking forward most to 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 see at the Star Hub Football Festival and why, the five best answers 
will get the each get a pair of tickets. I'll pick Teddy Sheringham because he played for West Ham and he was one of my favourite footballers of the last that twenty year period. I thought he was such an elegant, intelligent footballer. Who would yours be? John Anarisa, because Risa <laughs> <laughs> Well our director clearly doesn't agree. <laughs> but uh, oh, my ears, but my ears. more importantly, <laughs> what do you think? Get your answers to us. You stand a chance yep. to win the tickets. Yep. Closing date is 12th of April. So get it in before then. Brilliant. And we'll see you at the game. We'll be yeah, at the game. We'll be at the game. Yeah. And we'll see you here, as always. Same time, same place next week. And do keep your comments coming underneath. Without you, we don't have a show. Yeah. Subscribe to Starhub as well for Premier League uh, broadcasts. Brilliant. Yep. Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs>